Yo, what is going on you guys? Cafe's Kid here. Regardless of your thoughts on the franchise, Kingdom Hearts is easily one of the best representations of the Disney universe in video games. Sure, they have some classics like Aladdin, DuckTales, and The Lion King, or even one of my personal favorites in Epic Mickey, and you even have your so meh, they're eh, licensed games like Tangled and Chicken Little, but in terms of overall execution and game design, Kingdom Hearts takes the cake. So the worlds that represent Disney in Kingdom Hearts range from to but today, we're going to be discussing the latter. Square Enix has done a wonderful job in bringing some of our favorite Disney classics and modern gems to the controller, and while there are a lot that are phenomenal, today I'm going to be ranking my top 10 personal favorites. A caveat of this list is that I won't be including any non-Disney worlds such as Traverse Town, The World That Never Was, etc. It's not that I don't love most of these worlds, I just simply wanted to narrow the list down to how well Disney specifically is represented in the franchise. Also, some entries on the list will be a world's version in all of its games, and some will only be specific iterations of a world. This is just because, honestly, some versions of worlds kind of suck, and I don't want that to take away from other shining moments that a world has had in other appearances. If you enjoy this video, I'd really appreciate if you click the like button, as the support means all the world to me. Also, I just want to emphasize that I recognize that this list is entirely my opinion, and I hope that you do too. I'd love for you to share your own favorites in the comments below. With that in mind, let's get started. Alright, so I'm going to address the obvious right now in mentioning that Birth by Sleep is at a clear disadvantage in this list. The game itself had three separate campaigns, meaning that they didn't have a whole lot of time to dedicate to a single adventure or experience in world building for all the Disney worlds in the game. With that being said, they did still manage to do a really good job with Neverland in my opinion. I can't tell if I'm giving some leeway to Neverland because I wanted a Birth by Sleep inclusion on the list or if it genuinely earned its spot in the rankings, but regardless, it's easily my favorite world in the game as it is bright, colorful, and it gives us a new perspective on the Peter Pan experience that we received from the first game. And not only that, but it's also one of the only times that we got an OG Disney villain boss experience when we fought Captain Hook in the Ventus storyline. Tack on the awesome Aqua vs Vanitas boss battle and the extra work that they put into including some storytelling with Peter Pan and the Lost Boys, and you get yourself a really solid experience regardless of the inherent inhibitions offered by it being a PSP game. Okay, so this world was almost a lot higher on the list, but I realized that I love it for reasons that aren't really fair to the other worlds, and I tried to be as objective as possible while dropping it in the rankings. I'm already a huge fan of the Big Hero 6 movie, which gave this world an unfair advantage the first time I played Kingdom Hearts 3, but honestly, for me, it really delivered. It doesn't offer much in terms of individual unique areas or linear level progression, but I genuinely lost a good hour or two after completing the main story of the world just exploring the city looking for lucky emblems. Almost every world that I loved in Kingdom Hearts 3 was a result of how much mindless fun I had searching for lucky emblems in the game. I seriously adored this mechanic, but tack on the dynamic music that changes depending on the time of day that you explore the city, and the hype as hell climactic Baymax fight making it impossible for me not to include San Francisco on my final list. Symphony of Sorcery is another case of representing a game that had a clear disadvantage coming into the list, but still managed to deliver an experience that earned its spot on the rankings. Never in a million years would I have expected a Fantasia level made for a handheld console to compete with the best Kingdom Hearts worlds, but the way this experience was designed not only allowed for the game to capitalize on the already amazing flow motion mechanic, but it also allowed you to progress through the experience in a unique and magical way while incorporating iconic classical music in the process. And on top of all of that, they brought back Chernabog. One of the coolest boss fights from the original game making a reappearance is just awesome. There's really not a whole lot more to be said other than that I cannot emphasize how impressed I was by this world. It was so much more enjoyable than it had any right to be. Experiencing the world of Toy Story from the size of Woody and Buzz was alone enough reason for this world to make the list. Seriously, being able to traverse Andy's room like I'm playing Toy Story 2 in HD was maybe a top 10 moment in gaming for me. But then you realize that you also get to explore an entire giant three-story super mall with You've Got a Friend in Me playing in the background on top of all of that. Add on one of the coolest looking bosses in Kingdom Hearts history with Toy Box being one of the only worlds in the game to offer an original story, and not just throwing Sora and gang into the middle of the source material, makes it a Disney world that I hope influences many future Kingdom Hearts games to come. Halloween Town kills in both of its mainline appearances for mostly one major reason, the aesthetic. 
How cool is it to run around the world of Halloween Town with This Is Halloween playing in the background looking like every emo middle schooler from the late 2000s? Seriously, Halloween Town Sora was my fashion icon growing up. I wanted to look like this kid so bad. This world is also when the game really spiked in difficulty for me as a kid, which makes it memorable in its own right. Tack on fighting alongside Jack Skellington, the awesome Oogie Boogie boss battle, and the fact that you get to work with Santa Claus in the second one, and you have yourself what I'd imagine is one of the most memorable Disney worlds for kids who played the first two games growing up. Olympus Coliseum was already one of the most content-filled Disney worlds in the first game, with the tournaments that got introduced throughout the campaign and got exponentially more difficult each time. So what did they decide to do in Kingdom Hearts 2? They maintained the tournament formula, but also gave you just a really good narrative-driven level on top of all of that. There's a reason that Olympus has become a staple in the Kingdom Hearts franchise, making appearances in every single game aside from Dream Drop Distance. For this list, however, we are going to only be focusing on the Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 iterations of the world, as the Birth by Sleep one is relatively weak, and while Kingdom Hearts 3 is cool, it doesn't really offer the same level of content as the first two. Kingdom Hearts 3 chose to start its entire story off in Olympus because Square knew that they had developed such a strong relationship between Herc and the gang in the previous games, and that players had become so accustomed to that Greek god adventure in their Kingdom Hearts experiences. In my objective opinion, the Caribbean may actually be the best Disney World that a Kingdom Hearts game has ever produced. If we're basing the list solely on atmosphere, graphics, and world design, it truly does stand above all the rest. Of course, this list is accounting for more things like nostalgia, charm, and quality of worlds for their time, but in terms of raw numbers and undoctored judging, the Caribbean may actually truly rank at the top. The main reason that I'm holding it at 4th place though is because not only did it have 13 more years and 2 extra consoles worth of polishing put into it, but it's also one of those aforementioned worlds where Sora, Donald, and Goofy are just thrown into the middle of a movie that we've already seen before. It's not really a case of Toy Box's originality where it's a whole new adventure. This world's form of storytelling was essentially just animating the third film while tossing in the gang's goofy ass uncanny valley character models to have it make sense for the game. And while it looks amazing, it's just not all that original. But narrative aside, the world itself is just so much fun to explore. For the same reason that I love San Francisco, I lost hours to just exploring the different islands and landmarks in the Caribbean looking for items and lucky emblems. When you also account for the fairly enjoyable pirate ship mechanic and another rare instance where we got a classic Disney villain boss battle in the Davy Jones fight, you end up with a masterpiece that essentially feels like a game within a game. The Lion King is one of the greatest things to happen to Walt Disney feature animation. It was a massive part of the Disney Renaissance with an amazing soundtrack and wonderful characters to back up the unique interpretation of both the stories of Joseph and Moses from the Bible, as well as William Shakespeare's classic story of Hamlet. No, seriously though, this world just kinda rocks. Running across the plains and savannas of Africa as Lion Sora is an absolute blast. Combat as Lion Sora is pretty awesome as well, other than his range being a little bit smaller, but with Flying Donald and Spinning Goofy by my side, no monster is unconquerable. Really though, this world I think is the best at taking the gang and putting them into the respective Disney source material while feeling truly immersed and convinced that they are actually living within the world of the movie. Plus, I thought that the Ground Shaker boss fight was super epic, and it's probably one of my favorites in the game. I'm honestly not really sure where people are going to stand on this world ranking so high in the list, but the 100 Acre Wood is just so perfectly done in the first two games. The game manages to develop such a sincere and honest relationship between Sora and the Winnie the Pooh crew while collecting the lost pages throughout his adventures to the other worlds. And then, in Kingdom Hearts 2, it just rips that relationship away from you, making you even more motivated to search every nook and cranny for the torn pages again in the second one to rebuild that friendship. All in all, this world just acts as a haven of solace during two games that are otherwise dramatically emotional and damning in the constant presence of danger. Then you just get to go hang out and push around a yellow bear on a swing because you both feel like it. The comfort that this world offers is highlighted in the end of the world when after doing a bunch of enemy gauntlets from the worlds that you explored throughout the game, you get to just hang out, breathe, and save in the Winnie the Pooh teleport as a reward for how much fighting and killing that you've done up to that point, only to be thrown right back into the action immediately after. And I'm just going to go on a tiny tangent really quickly. Why was the Kingdom Hearts 300 Acre Wood so freaking bad? Like. They had the formula of two great iterations of the world in the past, they had the same level of earned relationships between Sora and the Winnie the Pooh crew, similar to that of Herc and the gang. How did they screw it up so bad? They had people working on a subpar cooking minigame with Remy, couldn't they have just taken them and had them make a better version of a fan favorite world? Like, 
I'm not mad about the bonus content with Remy's cooking minigame, but like, they could have just reallocated resources to deliver on one of the most charming parts of the first two games. I, I mean, I'm honestly just pulling out my ass because I really love Hunter Dick the Wood. <laughs> Alright, so I couldn't conclude this list without really quickly going over some honorable mentions. These worlds barely missed out on making the most honored, elite, irrefutable Kingdom Hearts rankings to ever grace YouTube, and for that, they do deserve a brief shout out. These honorable mentions are Monstropolis, The Land of the Dragons, Country of the Musketeers, Enchanted Dominion, La, La Kaiti des Cloches, and Kingdom of Corona. Alright, so for me, almost everything about Timeless River is perfect. I'm already a huge sucker for classic Disney as I grew up watching the Vintage Mickey DVD collection, and as a result, I was offered something that I never really expected to experience in gaming through the Timeless River world. Most every other Disney movie and character has always been at the very least a possibility when it comes to appearances in Kingdom Hearts games. Like, I could have predicted things like a Stitch world in Birth by Sleep, or a Frozen world in Kingdom Hearts 3, but never would I have expected to see Steamboat Willie, a 77 year old mouse in video game form. This was before I was actively roaming the internet as a kid, so I really didn't have much of a clue that this was coming. And also, the point in the game in which this world appears is just magical. You finally get to experience and roam the grounds of Disney Castle, the world that teased us hardcore in the original game. And then after fighting alongside Queen Minnie, you get to turn back time and fall right into a black and white classic. I think the style of this world is just amazing, I think that the over the top cartoony battles in the world are amazing, and I think that the music is phenomenal. I will admit that I hate those bastard car heartless, but honestly I can look past that because everything else is just so wonderful. I'm watching you though. Okay, that's my list. What parts did you guys find yourself agreeing with, and what worlds did I feature that you absolutely hated? I know you're going to anyway, so please just let me know in the comments. Okay, jokes aside, I'd love to hear what worlds fall into your guys' personal favorites, and if you like the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. I would seriously appreciate it. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you next time.